Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, my first task is to um, thank the, um, all the people who help us um, put on the festival, um, and in this instance, the wonderful Nantucket Athenaeum, this beautiful great hall, which is filled with books, um, wonderful writers, um, readers in the middle. It's just, um, we, we kind of look at this as sort of a holy place. And um, we like to thank Molly Anderson, who's our exec the executive director, Amy Jennings, Jenis, sorry, bleh, um, who is, I was just with Matt Jennings, um, Amy Jenis, who um, is the um, specialist in special events, and um, all the rest of the staff who give up some of their time to be here for our benefit. There is a, a session that's um, uh, swapping out right now, but we're going to start for the benefit of you all who are here, and we're going to leave the doors open so people might be coming in, in but um, I think we'll just get going because these guys are really funny. <laughs> um, um, the, um, the typewriter rodeo um, poets are Jody, Carrie Ann, David, and Sean, and around here we call them the Fab Four. Um, they all have other work and responsibilities. They are teachers, professors, writers, lawyers, and they have spouses and family. Um, yet they created the, rotary, the rodeo in 2013, and they've been traveling all over the world with their vintage typewriters, uh, writing poems on the spot for strangers. How many people here have um, had a poem written by the rodeo? All right. Okay. Um, the, um, have you ever tried to write a poem? It's hard, right? Well, this group, with you know, their boundless imagination, um, will ask you what you want to talk about in your poem, and in, in the blazing sun out there, with a line behind you, they write this beautiful poem for you and in just a few minutes, and it's, it's like they're psychic. Um, I've seen more than one person walk away from having a poem written, holding their poem to their breast, either crying or laughing. And um, some of you probably have had a couple poems written by them. Um, today, oh, they're all from Austin. Uh, today, three of the rodeo are here to talk about their collaboration, and I hope to read some of their poems, which they pu are now published in this book, some of which were written on Nantucket but for Nantucketers. Please welcome Jody, David, and Sean. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we are so happy to be here and to see all those hands of people who we've written poems for. That is, that is awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> Um, so we are just going to have like a little bit of a, of a conversation and talk about what we do and some of the things that come up and then in, in a bit um, op open it up to, to, to questions as well. But uh, I figured we'd start with one of the things that, that we always get asked and that was sort of how did this come about? How did we start the typewriter rodeo? And so. Jody or David, you guys want to take that? Sure, I can start us off. So and. Just for the few of you who haven't gotten a poem from us. Um, so what we do, we set up at a table with vintage typewriters. And you approach the table, and then I say, like, what would you like a poem about? And you can tell me anything. It can be a word. It can be a phrase. It can be an idea. You can tell me a story or about a person in your life or something you're going through, whatever it is. And then right on the spot, we'll craft a poem in, like, one to three minutes. Um, and then it's yours to keep. So that's, that's the nutshell of what we do. Um, and it's all on vintage manual typewriters. So that, yeah, that's right. no electricity. That's right. We operate without the benefit of demon electricity. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so you get your copy of the poem, and that's it right there. So that's what we do. Yeah. yeah. And we started up back in 2013. Um, the Maker Fair was coming to Austin. Big festival of ingenuity and creativity and inventions and I was so jealous of all the people I knew who were going to be bringing their cool 3D printed robots and things to the festival and I thought oh, I wish I could do something at Maker Faire and then I thought well okay I'm, I'm a writer I do improv what if we do something like we could call it the word makers and we'll write stories and poems and things 
So I reached out to Carrie Ann, who's not here because she and her wife Shannon are on their honeymoon, which is awesome. I know, it's so awesome. Um, and I was like, I said, hey, I I'm going to do this booth at Maker Fair. Do you want to come join me? And she said, of course, and I have a collection of vintage typewriters. What if we brought them? I reached out to Sean. So Carrie Ann and I knew each other through like an Austin mama's community. Um, Sean and I had done improv together 19 years ago now. Um, Davey and I knew each other through, he, did, he ran this really cool spoken word radio show on a Austin, one of the Austin radio stations. And then he came and took one of my writing workshops. It was kind of a little random and magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and, but we were all like, cool, that'll be a fun use of a few hours, and we'll write some random stuff for people, and it'll be great. I'm going to toss that to somebody yeah. else. And, and that's totally what it, what it was, and it ended right there. No, we, uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was crazy. We did not plan for it to last more than, than, than that day. I mean, yeah, even, even a few hours. And, and we didn't even know exactly what we were going to do. We sat down with, with Carrie Ann's typewriters, and people came up to the booth, and they were like, what do you guys do? Like, we don't know yet. <laughs> so, uh, and then we ended up typing poems. I think we started primarily with haiku um, and then kind of switched in, into some other, other poems um, as we went. And, uh, and yeah, that, that day, like at the Maker Fair, you know, people were drawn over, uh, you know, by the, the sound of these four clacking typewriters, you know, going together. And, um, and at one point, somebody asked us, you know, do you guys do this at other events? And we just looked at each other and were like, yes, we do. <laughs> And then the name. Came. And then at some point, somebody called out, and we'll never know who this person was. Uh, somebody called out, y'all are like a typewriter rodeo. And we were like, we are like a typewriter <laughs> rodeo. And we had, the, we had the domain name registered that night. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy. And so the first few months, I think, after that, we did a few events. Um, and then it, you know, it started to catch on you know, by word of mouth. And then it just... Has, has been this amazing journey um, um, for us. We've gotten to do events uh, all over the country um, and uh, in, in Mexico and places like that and, and type poem, poems for people, you know, uh, everywhere. So that's just been uh, nothing like we ever could have imagined or planned. And I kind of like it that way. It's kind of like, you know, poem. We have no idea what we're doing when we're starting a poem. We had no idea what we were doing when we started this and just kind of kind of go with it. Yeah. That's true. When we, when we start off, we don't have time to plan out our poems with the, with the situation that we're in, uh, typing poems for people. When we type the first word of the poem, we, we hardly know what it's going to be about. We hardly know where we're going to go with it. And we're in the process of discovery as we write the poem because it's the only thing we have, we have time to do. Um, and I think that that is part of what makes it possible for us to, to do it in such a short time. People sometimes are sort of taken aback that we're able to do it, but I think that the fact that we have to do it so quickly and spontaneously is actually what makes it easy to do, kind of paradoxically. Yeah, that's true. If you gave me your poem topic and said, I'll see you back here in a week, I can't wait for your perfectly crafted poem, like, I think I would no. run away. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I, but on the spot right there, sure, I can do all kinds of stuff. Um, and there's something about turning off your internal editor. We do a lot of like, you're, you're, we're going to make mistakes. Like we always say that the mistakes are, are nice bonuses. They're free. Yeah. Um, the typos. In included with the price of purchase. That's right. Yeah. Every typo. You get, you get all the typos. You get, you get to see the weird key things that each of our typewriters does. Mine sometimes lately... It just, every so often it'll just smush a few letters really close together, and that's one of the nice little quirks. Um, <laughs> my, my typewriter, the G key, oh, yeah. doesn't work anymore, so after the poem is done, I have to go through by hand and write in all the Gs. <laughs> <laughs> or just never use any words that have G. That's right. Write a poem about <laughs> Google. No, nope, I can't do it. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, and, yeah. and it, well, that, that's one of the cool things about, so, you know, again, we didn't play in any of this, but like using typewriters, you know, I don't think we ever would have thought, hey, let's do something with typewriters. Um, but uh, one of the many things that I love about uh, using typewriters, ours are, are again, are all manual ones, um, so they're, you know, pretty, pretty old. Mine's a 1928 typewriter, so there's no correcting ribbon or anything like that or delete key, and, and people often say, you know, what do you, what do, you do when you make a mistake? You're like, you make a mistake, like that's it, you, you keep going. Like there's, you can maybe like exit out if you notice, but a lot of the times like it's there. And that's one of the cool things about a typewriter is 
once it's on the paper, there's no taking it back, right? For me, that's kind of like life. Like if you make a mistake in real life, you can't take it back. You don't have a time machine. You can go back and, and erase that, right? So you just go with, with whatever uh, comes out. And sometimes that can lead into really cool places for the poems that you never would have expected. So it's one of the, the things that I love about uh, uh, using a typewriter, I think. And, we have, and one of the the things that I've come to love, but is, is a bit, can be a bit scary about using a typewriter, is when you're typing, people can see what's coming out of that typewriter right at the same time that you're typing. It's almost like they can see into your thoughts um, as you're doing that. So I have people who will lean forward and watch as I'm typing, and, and I'll be like, oh, okay, at first I was like, this is, uh, they're like in my brain right now. Um, <laughs> But it's also kind of cool. It, like it, it, it forces you to, to, to keep going, and it's you know if you make a mistake, they see it, and everybody makes mistakes, you know, and that's part of life. And I think it's what makes what we do kind of sort of real and authentic. Like we're, there's, we don't we don't hide anything with what we're doing. So. Yeah, I wonder if we talk about making the book. And the Ooh. book. We so, made a book. Yeah. <laughs> so we're sitting up here because we got a great offer to make a book of our poems, which was an interesting challenge because we hand the poems off to the poem recipients and they walk away with them and yeah. so usually we never see them again the, the person or the poem 9.5% yeah. of the poems which is I another think. thing that makes it a lot easier to write because there's there's <laughs> almost no accountability and that's really nice <laughs> it's true and and i think you know what what has happened is there's a few ways that poems have come back to us over the years if we write a poem that feels like sometimes i'll write one and i'll be like I want, a, I want a copy of that. And sometimes it's, I like the story that came out of it, or there's just, there's always just something. I'll take a picture of it. Um, it. It's not a frequent thing for me, but every so often I'll do that. And so that was a way where we could start compiling them. Yeah, and some, oh, go ahead. No, you go. go that come back to us on social media, like people will post <laughs> them on Facebook or Instagram or things like that. And which we love. We do love that, yes. Yeah. And we did for a while. We had a mailing list, uh, and so we could keep in touch with people for a little while, but I forgot why we, anyways, we haven't done that in a while, but we used to do that. Um, so yeah, what, what, you know, the collecting these, these poems, it's kind of like the tip, tip, tippy tip of the iceberg of, of what's out there um, for, for us. And I, I think that's kind of cool too, that, that there are all these poems that, that we've written that are out there, you know, on people's fridge, refrigerators, maybe on their walls, hopefully not like in their trash can or anything like that. But Lining their birdcage. Yes. Um, and they could be, you know, and, and they're all over the place. Like, and it's just such a cool thing. We, so uh, one of my friends who's uh, in Austin, she's a, she's a dog walker. Um, and she was uh, going, she was like, I'm at somebody's house, I got their dog, and there's a poem of yours up on the refrigerator. <laughs> like, that's just the coolest thing, like, to see, see those things happen. So, yeah, so we collected the poems um, for this. Um, a lot of them are matched up with the people that we wrote the poems for, so we got sort of their take on why they requested the, this particular topic and then what it meant to them or what the poem meant to them and, uh, and, and in some cases some photos um, to go with, with them in the poem which, which was great um, and other ones are not, are not matched yeah, up Yeah, some people. of them are ones that we sent out into the world, we took a picture of and we have no idea who, who got, the, who the recipient was but we have it and we you know, tried to find them and it's pretty virtually impossible um, and so that with those we have a little bit of our story of why we love the poem or something specific that like that brought out in us, which was really fun to get to write and think through and kind of encapsulate like what was what was really special about this poem or why why did I take a picture of this one? Why did I want to keep this one nearby? Um, I was looking for there's one my favorite poem that we have in here for how we got it. Uh, oh yeah. So it's it's this one and um so this was last May, so a little over a year ago. Um, I was in Portland, Maine, and I took a ferry to this island called Peaks Island, which is just a small island off of Portland, Maine. I'm sitting there on the ferry, I'm by myself, and I have a t-shirt on that says Austin City Limits Music Festival. And uh, these two women end up sitting next to me. It's like a small ferry, and they, they sat next to me and like, oh, yeah, are, you, are you from Austin? I'm like, yeah, like, oh, so are we. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And, uh, and so we start talking, and somehow it came up about, about typewriter rodeo, and they're like, oh wait, you're the ones who do the, you know, the poems on the radio. I'm like, yeah, and, and, they, and they're like, we were at an event, and, uh, and this woman um, 
Carrie wrote us a poem. Uh, it was called uh, Two Acorns um, Fall in Love. And I was like, oh, I remember that. Carrie loved that poem. But she never took a picture of it. She just told us about it. And we're like, yeah, that's us. And she wrote it for us you know, a year ago. And now we just got married and we're on our honeymoon here. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. And then we were talking and I was like, hey, so we're making a book. <laughs> Do you guys want to be in the book? And they're in our book, and they sent us this picture of them right there um, and a picture of the poem. And I was like, no, that's kind of the cool, I don't know, serendipitous thing that, that uh, I don't know, makes what we do and sometimes really, really special. So, so yeah, so we got all these poems and, and put them in a book. And yeah, anything you want to say Now there's about? a book. Should we, should, we, uh, should we each maybe read one from the book? Sure, yeah. we can do that, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Do you have one that you have in, in mind that you want to read? Or? Sure, I can start. Okay, good. All right, yeah. <laughs> so um, there's a, a, a few different things that happen on a recurring basis with what we do, and um, they're also fun. One of them is when um, your, uh, someone will ask a, uh, for a poem about something that they know something about, but we don't. Uh, for example, there is a poem in here for a woman from a, uh, who is a, uh, archaeology, uh, an archaeologist of Mayan ruins. And so she wanted a poem about that. I knew nothing about that, so I got to ask her some questions about it and um, got some really great details, and so I get to learn things that way. That's in this book. Um, sometimes people will ask a poem about, for a poem about something that we know something about, like I'm really into space, and so maybe like a kid or somebody will ask for a poem about space, and that's really fun for me. And then sometimes uh, we're asked for a poem about something that we know nothing about, and we just go with it. We just write what we can. And so uh, there's one in here that somebody wanted a poem about Gone with the Wind, which is a book I've never read, and it is a movie that I've never seen. <laughs> and, uh, but I felt like I knew a thing or two about it. Uh, so let's see if I can find that one. Uh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> Gone with the Wind for Shantini. I've never read it, but I'm pretty sure it's about some lady with red hair. They called it Scarlet back then and how she was having problems because the wind kept blowing her hair away. <laughs> she was practically bald. But luckily she had this friend, Tara, who would go out to the cotton fields behind her big white house, maybe it was the actual white house, I'm not sure, and pick those red hairs off the cotton plants where they had been caught up. And the red-headed lady made herself a wig from her own hair. And she showed it to her boyfriend. But sadly, he didn't give a damn. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I really should have thought about this. I should have like a set of page numbers in my head. Hmm. Sean, if you know of one, you can take it from me. I was trying to think of one of yours. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Let's see. We'll find, we'll find something weird. <laughs> go for something weird. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. This one is, <laughs> I haven't actually read this poem <laughs> in months, so. Oh. This will be fun. <laughs> we, um, we did an event at the Dallas Museum of Art, and they do this um, like once a month, big open at night, and people come and hang out in the art museum at night. And it was fantastic. And like some absurd number of people were there, like 10,000 people or something. And what was really sweet was we set up, and um, in like the first 15 minutes, as we were right before we started, there was this group of teenagers who were just hanging out waiting for us to start. And I was like, here's this group of teenagers on like a Thursday night who've decided that where they want to be is the art museum. And they're anxiously waiting for the poets to start typing. And like, that, that is some good, magical teenage goodness. So they promptly sat in front of us like they were our only audience for, I don't know, it was a while. Yeah. Before like 
throngs of people came. But in the beginning, it was just them. Just them, yeah. And, and they so they would back. just keep coming back around. Just more and more. Awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> so, uh, so, so this one was one of the topics that... They're trying to challenge us, right? Yes, so yeah. They, were, yeah, they were very much like, let me challenge you, which is great yeah. fun. Like the... The poems where people are like, oh, this is going to be really hard. Well, the truth is giving, the, giving us a weirder topic actually gives us some really interesting like, parameters and boundaries to work inside of. So it's actually fabulous. So this one, they said, well, I want, I want a poem called Cats Wearing Sweater Vests. <laughs> and I was like, They're like, do that one. <laughs> came on, because we write a lot of poems about cats, a lot a of lot. poems about cats. But and not nearly as many as poems about dogs. Like in, in, the, in this kind of order of most popular poem requests, you've got like dogs, people's dogs. They'll show us a picture a lot of times. Kids, spouses, cats, dogs. <laughs> dogs are like, they inspire poetic goodness. This yeah. dog over here yeah, is like, this adorable I dog love. Over here. Yes. <laughs> he was like, oh, just want to go curl up and like know. rub his <laughs> belly off. <laughs> All right, so this is cats wearing sweater vests. 17 hours. This is the amount of time I have spent licking my own shedding fur off my body, my fantastic, fantastic, stretchy body. And then here we are in this dance of human and feline, and you have gifted me with an entire other extra layer of fur. And granted, it is quite colorful and remarkably patterned, and I would love, truly love, to see the poor creature you called it from. But darling, this grooming is hard work, and it's going to take me at least 46 hours to lick this whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's funny, too, while Sean looks, is that, you know, we, we write these poems, and that was one that I took a picture of because I was like, that was fun. Um, <laughs> But the second we send it off, somebody else is approaching. And so there's like a moment where you're typing it. It's a super intimate moment with somebody where you're sharing. Sometimes it's something silly, but sometimes it's something really profound or emotional. And, and so we're, we're all in with this person. And then you hand them the poem. And hopefully you get a chance to see them read the poem. But almost immediately, you're making your next moment of connection. And, so, and it goes really kind of nonstop. And so often... It, if you came to me 10 minutes later and said, what was in that cat poem you just writ, wrote? No, like no. zero idea, no idea. And sometimes I can remember the topic. Like, I can remember the poem? people. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll know, I'm like, oh, I wrote you a poem. But what I actually did, no, no memory at all. So that one is fascinating because I, I, have, I have no memory of it. I love it. I like it a lot, but I don't remember actually like writing any of it. <laughs> Something that yeah. happens here in Nantucket, uh, which is just so delightful, is somebody, people will come and say, you know, you wrote this poem for me last year or a couple years ago, and I just wanted to come and say that I still have it hanging up or it still means something to me. And for some reason that happens here more than almost anywhere else. And it's, it's just, it's really, it's really rewarding when that happens. Yeah, this island is magical. Yeah, it really yeah. is I don't know special. if you know that, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty magical. Um, and so, yeah, this is one of the ones where, and it's one of the things that happens too is we'll get a, a request like cats wearing sweater vests or something crazy or outlandish or fun. And then literally the next poem will be a 180, you know, from that. And so this was one that was at a, a maker fair and like lots of kids coming up, asked for poems about dragons and Minecrafts and, you know, unicorns battling, you know, narwhals and things like that. And, uh, and then uh, this guy came up and uh, came up, and he came up to the table and he said, um, uh, I said, what can I write you a poem about? And he said, well, um, my partner wants, partner wants to have kids, uh, and I don't. Um, we've been together eight years now, and we're splitting up. And nothing's wrong, it's just, can you write a poem about that? And I was like, all right. Um, so that's his, this is his poem here called uh, Nothing's Wrong. Have you ever heard of binary stars? It happens when two points of light, two bright burning bodies, are so drawn together that they become encircled, a pair, orbiting around each other in perfect balance. But not forever. Because sometimes it's a small shift, maybe a nanosecond break in gravity, maybe a minuscule meteor 
from nowhere. And those two stars, that forever pair, suddenly split. And it's not because anything is wrong or bad, it's just that the universe says, it's time. And that's it for that poem. <laughs> and I handed that, I, I snapped a photo of the poem because I, I liked it in the moment, and then I handed the poem to that guy, and it was the next person in line. I never got to see him read it, never saw him again, no idea what, what happened with that poem or that, that guy, So, which is one of the many times that, that that happens with what we do. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, questions would yeah. be good, yeah. 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 yeah we'd love to answer any questions that you all have. Questions in the, yes, great. Oh, oh, nice. I had asked, is that okay? Yeah. I had asked you how many poems you did yesterday and today, and you said about 90 or something like that. And then I asked you, was there any poem that you would have liked to have taken a picture or kept? Yeah, we did about 90 poems today. Today, yeah. So, um, and I don't know I don't how know, many you got yesterday. 60 yesterday, something like that, 50 or 60. Um, I don't, I don't know. So I think it's, it may be different for each one of us. So I, uh, if I have a, a poem that, that particularly strikes me for some reason, I'll take a picture of it. Or if there's a story behind the poem that, that I really like, even if I don't know uh, how thrilled I would, would be seeing the poem again, I'll, I'll take a picture of that. Um, so I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I took pictures of maybe... I don't know, five or six poems today and three or, three or four yesterday. So, And then again, like that, the other ones could come back to us, you know, on, on social media or whatever. Um, to, so and, and if you knows? ever get a poem and we, we haven't taken a picture of it, it doesn't mean we didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. that's really true. That's really I'll make true. that point. I've had that just happen like so many times where I'll take a picture and they'll, they'll say, well, why would you take a picture? And like, I say, well, you know, because I, I take a picture of ones I really liked. And then inevitably, someone says, well, you didn't like mine because they're still standing there. I'm like... I loved yours. I just, I, we, next? <laughs> no, it just, like, it just, just happens. Yeah, so. I often take a picture if it's like, it's something just kind of slightly off of center from what I usually yeah. do or something. So it's one where I'm like, oh, that's really different. And I want to kind of remember this later. Um, I took one picture today. I don't remember what it was. I've been sitting here trying to think. And, and I didn't take any because I always forget to yeah. take pictures of them. Um, like, uh, I'm, I, I don't know why, it just doesn't occur to me, even though Sean has reminded me many, many times that I should probably <laughs> take pictures know, I used to write, like, handwrite a note to Davey in the thing, like, take photos. <laughs> I would yeah. just slide it down the no, table. No, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. <laughs> and he would see that when we'd finished up the gig. Oh, look at that note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah, that's a good, I mean, like, yeah. very few, very few. Yeah, okay. in the back. Oh, yeah. So I've never seen you work. I've, my sister has your poetry, and I'm sorry I missed wherever you were typing away today. Um, so my question was more logistical. Like I sort of assumed you guys would have bounced, like you would create a poem together. But it sounds like you all work independently, just next to each other. Yeah. Correct. And do you That's ever right. then work together? Would you like to? Do you think that would work? No. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Although I, I think it's, it is really important to us that we are that we are at like at the same table. Like sometimes at events, they want to put like one of us over here, one of us over there. We don't like that. We, the, there's definitely a shared energy yeah. uh, between us as we're all kind of working together. And I think also there's a greater kind of like visual appeal to what we're doing and draws people in more to see us all together doing it. Um, but I think it would just sort of get us in our heads too much to try to collaborate on a poem. Yeah, every so often we'll toss a poem to somebody else. So usually, like I think Davy's poem was a perfect example of like, we'll write a poem on anything. We don't have to know what it is. But every so often, if somebody else is like basically free and I know it's something they love, um, I'll toss a poem. So like a Doctor Who poem, like I will always toss that to Sean because I know that he's going to have so much fun with that in a way that like I'll write a poem, but it won't, won't have kind of the nuanced meaning. So we'll occasionally do that. Um, and, you know, every now and again we've done one where we like put a line or two and passed it down the line. Yeah. And it's okay, but the truth is it's, yeah. uh, the gimmick, like because there'll be someone who's like, oh, I'll try this. And I'm like, okay, well, that, that'll be fun. 
letting us just get into it, you're going to have a, a more enjoyable poem Yeah, in I the agree. end is what I... I've and a couple times people have come up and say, hey, how about each of you write about the same topic and we'll see which is best. And we're like, no, we're not gonna, no. We'll, we'll write do about it. Yeah. We don't, we'll we just don't want to judge. Usual, our usual response to that is we just, we just love each other too much to compete. We're, yeah. just, we're not into that. But we yeah. do write yeah. poems on the same topic all the time. Oh, all the I time. Mean, yeah, yeah. And, and it's great and it's fun and like together they all like, they balance out all of our different styles. And we each have many different styles, but like together it's all... Yeah, but I yeah. think I think nice. we could any, any one of us could tell from just like a, probably a single line which of the other people had written a poem. That's very true. Yeah, I think that's true. true. Yeah. Uh, so I picked up your book yesterday, and I'm most of the way through it. And I have two Thank quick you. questions. One, why did you want to make me cry? Because <laughs> that's the highest mark of success in what we do. <laughs> and two, do you ever write poems for each other? Mm. Oh. Um, Every. Now and again, very, yeah. very rarely, like there's, I have a very vivid memory of writing, but you, I. You, you wrote you, me you, one. You wrote a poem for Sean? I did. Yeah. I wrote a, I wrote a poem for Sean. But it was about you. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was called An Ode Upon Why Davy Does Not Take Pictures of His Poems. Oh. We, no, I we will sometimes write each other really short, funny poems yeah. about like, you know, something that's going on or if like we're at a, a, a gig or an event, it's like a downtime and we'll try and like make each other laugh with it with a short or like, poem. Like a warm up poem before something starts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if there's downtimes, it's funny because it, it like when it's really intense and nonstop when we're typing and when there's a lag, it can kind of make your energy flag really fast. Um, so yeah, sometimes like if we're in an event and there's like some kind of other activity happening over there, like. I'll write a quick poem about the caricaturist and send it over to Sean or something. So quick, is this but the, to Sean? The, <laughs> I always I start guess. typing you more poems. I guess. On 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 like the the making you cry thing. I think that that's one of the the unexpected amazing things about what what we do is is for whatever reason um, we will have people who come up to us and we're complete strangers and they you know. They'll ask for a poem about cats wearing sweater vests, or they'll ask for a poem like that guy did, or something even more personal and, and intimate. And you know, maybe it's easier sometimes sharing things with with strangers, people you don't know. And so, for some of these poems, there is this you know intense emotional connection and 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 sharing and vulner vulnerability. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, there's there's a lot of emotion in some of these, and that comes from what people will share with with us, which. You know, again, I think is one of the, the most amazing things of, that we get to do with, with it, this. It's, it's really, it's, it's humbling and it's an honor. Mm -hmm. I just had a, a kind of a great follow-on question to that. It was, he had a great intro for my question. I was really thinking about, after you do this, I don't know if you do it for an hour or two hours, are you just emotionally exhausted because you go from cats to someone's death to whatever? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I, I mean... I think for me, it, it actually hits a level of physical exhaustion earlier. Um, it's a lot of work physically, like just typing on a manual typewriter is, it requires arm strength and such. Mm -hmm. um, and the quality of the, the chairs that we have makes a chairs. huge difference. It, yeah, we chair, need to bring these chairs. Yeah, these are awesome. Go. These are the best. <laughs> so good. Um, the, but yeah, there, there hits a point where all of a sudden I'm like, oh, Oh, my brain is done. I am tapped out and... Yeah, for me it's, it's you know, yeah, and we'll go like an, an hour, two, three, four. We've had gigs where we've done like seven, eight hours of, of poem typing and, uh, you know, we take breaks, yeah. you know, in, in those. But um, for me, there's kind of this switch that yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll flip on. Like if you ask me to write a poem right now, I'm like, I'm, I don't have my typewriter, I'm not in that quite my mindset. But when I sit down with the typewriter, when we're next to each other and that energy is going, then I kind of get into that zone. And I kind of feed off of that, I feel like, a little bit. And I've got the energy going. And right when we're done, sometimes we're all like super like energetic. And then when those typewriter cases close, we're just like, like power down right there. And if somebody were to come up and say, oh, can you write another poem? Like after that switch has flipped off, I'd be like, I can write it, but it's not going to make any <laughs> you don't want that sense. Or, yeah. So, yeah, it's this intense, almost like adrenaline rush, I guess, yeah. when you come down from that. It's a good description. It appears to me that much of your writing is extemporaneous and ad libitum, 
And you mentioned about being in the zone. Do you find that season, different seasons of the year or different locations or what have you is more inspirational than other times of the year or locations or people that you're surrounded by or questions that you're asked? Where does the inspiration you feel come from? It's from the person standing across me in that moment. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. whatever they bring. I, it, to, that, that's I, I, I personally, I, I'd have to say no. It doesn't make a big difference where we are or what time of year it is. I think, when, I think we'd all say that when we're in the midst of writing the poem, and this just sort of has to be the case because it's very often a loud, chaotic environment, we just shut the world out altogether. So it doesn't really matter where we are. Um, we're just attuning ourselves to the person, like Sean said, to the person in front of us, and then and then the world goes away when we start to type. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's whatever they bring to us, and that really informs the poem. You know, it can be you know the exact same topic depending on how somebody asks it, what their you know nonverbal language is, and, and all that will uh, inform for us how, how we write that poem and, and where it goes. So. Uh, you got the microphone? Yeah. Thanks. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the typewriters that you use. Do you have, Ooh, do you have particular yeah. typewriters that you chose? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Are, are there any interesting stories about yes. your particular typewriter <laughs> as you travel around? When we started this thing, none of us had a typewriter, well, except for Carrie Ann, yeah. who's not here today. Now, between us all, we probably have 80 typewriters, you think, between the four of us? <laughs> Something like that? Probably, yeah, a lot of typewriters. Some of it has, us have more typewriters than others. Than it, you know, but that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Open my own museum someday. <laughs> with the... So uh, my, my main machine, and I got this like after, after uh, just a the month first, or two of being yeah. with, uh, with the rodeo, um, I, I, I decided, no, this, is, this thing is actually happening. I need to have my own machine. I can't just be borrowing carry ins all the time. I happened to be walking by this sort of um, thrift type uh, antique store in Austin, and, and that week they were having a big display in their front window of typewriters. And I saw this one in there, and I knew immediately that this was the one. It was the only one in the display that really called to me. It's a 1941 Royal Quiet Deluxe, black matte finish. And uh, and I just and it's the machine I've used the pretty much this this whole time. I, I, I recently tried to swap it out with a, a newer Royal Quiet Deluxe from like 1953 or something, and I liked it, but it wasn't quite the same. And so I, it's been nice to get back to to uh, my main squeeze, um, uh, you know. And, and something I, sometimes I like to ask people, you know, try to try to think of literally anything, literally anything manufactured today that is still going to be in good working order in 75 years, nothing, nothing. But these machines will work after we're gone. Yeah. Um, my typewriter was a gift from my mother-in-law. It was hers. Um, it is a 1970 Lytton Imperial. It's the baby of the bunch by far. It's like a light blue, like the piping of my dress. Um, and uh, so my, my in-laws are family practice doctors who lived in the UK and they emigrated to Texas in 1975 when my husband was two years old. And before that in the UK, so this, this typewriter is, is a British typewriter, it's got a pound, like the dollar, the pound symbol. Now, not, I'm not talking about the hashtag. Can't, we can't hashtag on a typewriter. But it has like the, the <laughs> pound key on there. Um, uh, my mother-in-law, Judith, used it she was the medical advisor for Penthouse Forum. So, yeah, if you had a question for Penthouse where a doctor's input would be valuable, they sent those to my mother-in-law, and she answered those questions, and now she likes to tell us about them in graphic detail. <laughs> She's fabulous, but she gave this, so once we started Typewriter Rodeo, she was like, oh, I have a birthday gift for you and gave me this typewriter. And I also have tried to use different ones, but, and I, I have some really, a couple really pretty ones um, too. I mean, mine is totally pretty, but I've got like this pink royal and a, a, a really cool, I don't know, I've got a few that are really lovely, but this one feels, I have described it as feeling like my handwriting. It feels right. And I try and type on other people's typewriters even, and I, it's like I can't write the same poems, so yeah. 
And that did remind me too, when somebody asked about do we write poems for each other, and we don't, but I did write, uh, I did Christmas with, with you guys a few years back, and we did a white yes. elephant, and my name that was drawn was uh, Jody's mother-in-law, and so I was like, I don't know what to get her, and so I ended up writing her a poem from that typewriter about all the things they had been through together um, <laughs> with her writing for Penthouse Forum. So that was a fun <laughs> poem to write. My, po my uh, typewriter is a 1928 uh, Remington Portable, so it's 90 years old, and it was, uh, that was the first typewriter I got um, when we started doing this. I was like, David, I was like, I can't keep using Carrie Ann's typewriter, so I found this one on, on eBay. I just, I looked and it was there. I was like, that looks pretty cool. And, uh, and I do have 40 plus typewriters or so, and that's still still my favorite. Um, I love it. It it the the keys lay flat in the case, and then you raise this lever on the side, and they kind of come up like peacock feathers when you're ready to type. And I love the way that it feels, and it's it's super responsive. And yeah, as long as you keep using them, like these typewriters, just just keep going. That's the worst thing you can do to a typewriter is not use it because it collects gunk and dust and everything. And, and and so, yeah, it's it's a great machine. Love it. We have, uh, we have time for one more question, but I'm going to ask one first. So are you coming back for a fifth year next year? We, are, are we invited? <laughs> I'm inviting you. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we, yeah, we would love to. Great. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know, I would think that when people are coming up to you, they would say, I want to do this too. Can I join your group or can I start a group like this someplace else? Once and in a while. And then also, do you ever meet other writers who say, can I be a guest poet for this week or this event? Um, yeah, I mean, we, that does happen, happen sometimes. People come up and ask us about it. not Actually, not that, that frequently. Not that um, often. We do have some, some folks in Austin who, uh, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll have a lot of gigs that, that we get asked to do, or they're super big ones that need more people. And so we have some other, you know, people that, that will join us from, from time to time. And, and we call them awesome. our reservists. Yeah, and they're great. So we, so we do that sometimes, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.